Hello everybody, today I'm out on the trail talking about Dungeons and Dragons 2024. And let... Oh, well... I guess there's somebody already up here talking about this, so I'm gonna have to go do this inside, I guess. Hey buddy! Hey pal! Hey old friend! Can we just call it 5.5? Everybody understands what that means? We've used that naming convention before? This new edition of D&D is 5.5. That's what it is, just call it that. Alphanumeric naming conventions are popular and necessary for a reason. Thanks. I am a man of constant sorrow who's been too busy to consider D&D 2024. Here's the thing. Ironically, I've actually been playing D, D. i've been running a lot of D, D. i've been doing painting classes and all of this stuff that i've been doing i've just been busy and i have not had a chance to really consider the fact that next month there's going to be a book available for everyone that everyone's going to get get and, and we're going to get like a new D, D, not just a supplement but like a literal new set of rules but it's really not it's really just 5.5 and so, t finally, late to the party as always, I have decided to take a look at this new stuff. I, uh, I'm going to do a flip through of the book that Wizards of the Coast gave me. Um, I, 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 I never got one of the books. Uh, apparently, having the uh, oldest running YouTube channel that covers D&D stuff occasionally, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just not important enough for them to reach out to me, which is fine. Totally fine. I mean, it, it, it must have got lost in the mail is all. It must have got lost in the mail. I read a couple of the articles, looked at some of the stuff. There, there's some helpful videos which I'm going to link in the description below. But uh, On Wargamer, there's an article that says uh, Future Looks Bright where they discuss that there's been uh, generous changes to the action economy. Uh, and, and there's a bunch of... <laughs> there's a bunch of stuff. Uh, one of the ones that occurred to me before, because this, this was something that was out a long time ago, is the whole drink potions as a bonus action thing, which I don't think a lot of people are going to find like too big of a deal. You, you drink a potion in D&D, &D, you get hit points back. That's very powerful, uh, and it costs an action. And then this next game, it's not going to catch an action. And I'm just considering, like, I don't think a lot of people are going to consider it as huge of a change as I do. My game is based around, like, basically survival D&D. &D. So there's very few chances to take long rests, short rests. Uh, the need for keeping your spell slots is at a critical level. And apparently that's not how a lot of people run D&D. &D. I've, I've heard people constantly say that there's the attitude about D&D because D&D is just as a white space where there is just combat, which is not really predicated on any kind of tactics or movement or anything like that. But it's just a white space where you interact with stuff and the players inevitably win. The issue with my games is that I make heavy use of the random item tables. And those random item tables heavily give out healing potions. And that's a very important thing for players in my games. Because unlike most uh, players my players generally start to use healing potions out of combat as a way to continue without risking a short or long rest. And I don't think a lot of people use it. I think they use healing potions only in combat, where for most games, that's the most powerful use. And so now, with the potions as a bonus action, it kind of throws off the action economy, and it also throws off the... Uh, the random item tables, which is more of a concern for me. I love random item tables. I love using them. I love the amount of chaos that it throws into the game. Indestructiboy did a great little thing where he went over and he did a flip through and he was talking mostly about his uh, the, the character stuff, I think, for building. But there was a couple little points. In fact, that apparently they nerfed find traps and they did it specifically because uh, uh, like an internet weirdo exploited a rule which is just like i don't if any advice can be given to the people making decisions like this you can't change rules when a single internet weirdo exploits the rules because that's really like 
at that point you're kind of giving in to the munchkins at this point because this literally was like oh you find traps means i can find uh pitfalls in this legal document and it's just like guys come on the, the thing is openly worded but only a true munchkin would try to pull that shit at the table and it might be funny to say oh yeah that's a really fun thing and to do that but then but then to to change the rules to codify that so we're saying that sort of behavior is acceptable from the general audience of players is just come on not everybody's a munchkin not everybody's gonna pull some bs like this so no we should not be looking towards reddit of all places for how normal people play the game trust me that's a bad idea what a grand and intoxicating ignorance I've never watched the Dungeon Dudes before, but they did a very good video about the new changes in the 2024 Player's Handbook. And they talk specifically about the new exhaustion rules. And you know what? I love exhaustion rules, but it was always kind of weird, uh, the rules in the 5e stuff. So this was like the first time that I've heard something coming up about the new books where I was like, hey, that can be... Well, no... Technically not. When I heard about the fact that they were giving an ability where you could give inspiration to another player character, I thought that was a great rule. I thought that was a very cool rule. Um, but this is the second time, and probably like the first time where I was like, wow, I kind of want to see that chart now. I kind of want to see those rules. So it really gave me a reason to like, I might actually go buy this book just because if there's any other tidbits like this, because the new exhaustion rules where you get uh, penalties that keep on stacking up. So in a lot of ways, I'm actually playing out Fallout uh, London right now. So it's, it's kind of like the Fallout London thing with radiation. Where radiation just keeps on getting worse, worse, and worse. <laughs> Until eventually you have to like figure out a way to like get yourself situated. Or else it's going to become a problem. You're just going to die instantly. Fallout London, by the way, is the first Fallout game where I died because I drank a Nuka Cola. And for those of you that don't know, that's just a common uh, item where you drink it and you get some uh, benefits. But the one penalty that you get is you get a you get a tiny bit of radiation. And in that game, that's not a huge deal because you get radiation from like pr pretty much almost everything you eat and drink and interact with. But I, I was so completely beat up and I was so completely irradiated that that tiny speck of radiation was enough to just finish off my character and kill me and i i was i was not angry at all that was like that was amazing i can't believe i died from drinking a soda these rules you can see the players having to like deal with it where it's not weird it's not hard to understand i literally had to print out the uh, exhaustion rules because it's not like I can remember that off the top of my head. With these rules, there's a system in place where you kind of just, it makes sense. And and you get the stacking negatives. So you can still do stuff. But instead of like having like disadvantage for like everything, you just get this massive penalty. Uh, which I think is good. Because there's a lot of stuff you can do in 5e that doesn't really require you to roll a d20. So yeah, I see this as a huge positive for my game. This is something I want to incorporate into my game. But uh, yeah, so yeah, I was, I was very happy about that. So um, a lot of stuff where I'm like, I just don't see how drinking the potions as a bonus action is going to fit into my game unless I dramatically change how I deal with random uh, item tables, which is, I mean, that might be something I'm doing anyways because I am coming up with my own random item tables. So uh, it's been 10 years. Maybe I need to retire the random item tables from the original uh, Dungeon Master's uh, guide. But uh, yeah, have I pre-ordered the D&D book 2024 for the Player's Handbook? No. Have I talked to the local public library and made sure that they're going to get a copy? Yes, because I think there is enough resources and enough good stuff in there where having a public library copy is definitely a good thing. And I'm definitely going to get a chance to take a look at that when that book comes in. Uh, either way, I might go out to my local store and buy it. Um, yeah, so check out the video by the Dungeon Dudes and check out the video by Indestructiboy. I think they all have some very good thoughts and perspectives about the new... Uh, D&D &D Player's Handbook. And again, I can only hope that uh, 
uh, my copy eventually gets to me. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Wizards of the Coast is never gonna never gonna do anything with this channel because, like, frankly, I'm not, this channel's for all intents and purposes this channel's effing dead anyways because i certainly love going to the goodwill by the pound i love finding weird crap i can use in my games <laughs> like uh a certain person known as world builder bob says uh he's a minimalist a minimalist dm oh minimalist dm more like a lacking dm he, he goes in there with like a couple pieces of paper and it's like oh, this is all i need to run my game it's like, buddy, I'm carrying in three duffel bags. I'm carrying in my map case. I'm carrying in my miniatures. I'm carrying in my props. I'm carrying in my terrain. I'm carrying in everything. Because somebody, someone has to balance out these minimalist weirdos like Bob World Builder. And, and if, if anybody, if, if he's got a problem with that, you can say it to my face. Yeah. <laughs> So they said, movement speed in 5e honestly doesn't matter much in my games. Most range attacks and spells can hit a target, and extra feet rarely make a difference. Um, it mattered more for short ranges like throwing weapons, but the players never felt clever for maxing out their movement range. So, yeah, what do you guys think about that? I mean, I, I've, I've been, I can think of one time very recently where my movement speed was not adequate to keep up with the thing that my character was chasing it, it does it does play a role i think it's up to the dm to decide how how much they want to lean in on nuance and stuff like that but i mean it's i i just I, I would say it's one of the more important things i think it matters i i can only say is that the only thing that kept uh your character wheelie dan alive for many sessions was the fact that he had extra <laughs> movement speed. Yeah. Uh, absolutely, yeah. I mean, like, yeah. his whole character was built on, like, you know, talking smack and then running away and having other people fight his battles for him. You know, the the concept of movement speed in D&D played so much into the character that it's, like, it became crucial for him to even survive. Yeah, and again, I don't, I don't see how anybody can run a D&D game without, like, having stuff matter and it's just yeah. like a lot of people tell me it's just like the white space thing because like in my games there's always like stuff happening but in other people's um, games it's just like well, we have like the blocks you know the blocks so a lot of times it'll be like oh how far is that you know what i mean yeah. i feel like since it's a visual representation oh yeah matters, but maybe if you were like or there was no board yeah. Then you just do whatever you want, but it, it, well, it's the difference between it's blocked being, out. It's the difference between like being somewhere safe or, or like running away. Like if yeah. if the if the creature that you're fighting has a greater movement speed than you, then you know like running isn't going to do anything. Yeah, it's just I I, I had I had crap movement speed as a gnome. Yeah, so, so that that's the big thing. They're going to tie movement speed, I believe, to your character choices in terms of your background and stuff. So apparently, oh. apparently being a little gnome is not going to limit your movement speed anymore. That's what I've heard. Oh, that's dumb then. I don't like Wait, that. so a gnome can have a better like movement that, speed yeah. than like than like a tall man? I was trying to find wow. that old character sheet. I just remember, uh, I think it was 25 feet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's just that's cartoony. Nothing. That's like, that's D&D, &D car like Looney Tunes D&D, &D, you know? Yeah, that's what I mean. That's nothing. Yeah, I, I, like, yeah, not, I, that, I not that it needs to be realistic, but like... You know, some bit of realism is nice. Yeah, I mean, it's just like you know, I don't. It's it's weird that you. It's it's always odd to me that you're like taking these ideas of the very real world and trying to put them into like a tactical game where the thing is like I think again a lot of people do like there's a lot of situations where people will run a game and there's absolutely no advantage to being a small creature. Which is just like, yeah. it's just like, that's, that's, again, it's really, it goes back to the argument that like the, the DM has to like set all this stuff up because if there's no advantages to being small, then being small just means your movement speed isn't good, which means you essentially you're playing a character that's not as good as another character. And, 
you know, there's very vocal people that feel that this is very important that they change that. So again, I, I I've yes. not seen the new version, so I don't know. This is all stuff that uh, that they, that. I'm... If they make a new version, will they make a book or no? Yeah, they're gonna make a book. Yeah. I don't like the idea of of a uh, of homebrew that much in concept. Like, there, there's things that I like about homebrew and like the leniency of DMs. As far as like for Wheelie Dan, for example, he used um, he used uh, infestation as as a cantrip, uh, but I wanted to kind of reskin it so that it was mosquitoes to fit in with his character. You know, there's little things like that that the DM can absolutely do to just make the player happy and help them get in character and all that stuff, and that's all good. But like, if if the DM has to homebrew whether or not somebody can have a health potion in combat, I mean that does kind of change the nature of combat for the players and it's like that i would imagine first on first guess that kind of takes away a lot of the role and responsibility of the cleric that most parties already need anyway but it's it's uh you you, you end up you end up kind of being a little bit more video gamey with uh with the yeah. combat and yeah. and that's something that i i don't like you know about about those changes just on first glance yeah, and again, I, I gotta figure out what's going on. Super weird. It sounds like a pain in the butt. Uh, yeah, it it sounds like when they release like a new version of a program, and then you have to learn it all over again. They're like, well, you you kind of have to because if you do something, yeah, you can't recognize if somebody's gonna be munchkin, munchkinning, being a munchkin. Does everybody recognize that word? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Only from your video. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to bring well, that then, word yeah. back because people just do these weirdly optimized characters that are like using broken rules and like eventually yeah. it just, eventually it just always leads to them just cheating because they want to be like the most powerful person at the table and stuff and yeah but yeah that's 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 what it is and if you if you allow people to use the new rules then you have to kind of know them so you can recognize when people are trying to pull bullshit Again, I don't do that. I'm 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 in it for the game. I'm in it for the story and the camaraderie. I'm not in it to win it. All right. Anyways, all right. Thanks, guys. Yeah. yeah.